Right. Why don't you do your customary uh, introduction there, Nick? Sure thing. Um, how is everybody? Uh, today, we're talking some uh, scary books. Scary books, because it's, it's coming up for Samhain or Halloween, as you non Gaelic folks like to call it. Anyway, I'm uh, Nicholas O'Shea Khan, and uh, today we have a special guest along with our usual uh, co-host. You want to introduce yourself, special guest, and then maybe then maybe we'll let co-host have a word. Go on, go on, special guest. Go on, go oh, on. Oh, is that me? Oh, sorry, I, I can't do the, the accent, sorry. Neither <laughs> <laughs> can we, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ron. Uh, uh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> I'm not British, so I, I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Canadian. Uh, I'm on Clive's other podcast, The Magic Morning Wood, and uh, guested on the other ones. Uh, what other one was I guested on? It is confusing, remember. isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many of them. I, I, you know, they're all... Ochafus, however, however you say uh, it. I, I was on Ochafus once, and yeah. yeah and, and we also do the Septic Shock Roadshow, uh, also here on YouTube, where we do... Uh, uh, horror movies by the by state American states. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. yeah so, so this is actually a perfect time for you to be on because we're talking all things spooky. Spooky, yes. It's right. coming up on. Uh, is is this? You don't usually do horror books. You usually do other books. I I, I, I gotta be honest. I'm sorry. I've never seen your first. show. What is this? My what is the show? I don't know. Well, what do you do here? <laughs> um. <laughs> have we done yeah, a horror book? I don't think we have. I suppose the nearest we've come is um, some of the uh, Tales of Moonlight and Rain. Oh, yes. The Japanese story. kind of. Yeah. 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 But that's. Yeah. But not really. Not a, not a straight. Nothing as trashy as this. This is I our see. first yeah. Halloween show. So. Um, yes. OK. Yeah. Great. So, I'm happy to be on. Spooky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. I will hold your hand if you get too scared. Mm -hmm. um, so. Right. So I chose a book, but then we're going to. Then, Nick, you decided to throw another one, and we're going mm -hmm. to talk about that one first. Um, right. Because it's chronological, and also, personally, I I preferred the other one, so I'd like to go out and yes. yeah, yeah. yeah, I I would agree. I think it's the better of the two yeah. books. I, th I think I think we all agree on that. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Yeah. Although, I mean, yeah. yeah. So what Relatively is it, speaking. Uh, <laughs> what, what is yes. it? What is it, Nick? What is, what is this first one? So this is a book by um, uh, an author called John Halkin. Um, it's called Squelch. Um, it's part of a series of books um, published by this uh, this Halkin person. Who I, my understanding is, well, Clive, do you want to, do you want to get ahead of me and, and explain who who Ramsey Campbell yeah, says well, John Halkin might be? We were both looking about. We obviously found the same source, uh, the Too Much Horror Fiction blog, and. A famed Ramsey uh, uh, horror author, Ramsey Campbell, chimed in, uh, saying that John Halkin was actually a pseudonym for someone quite high up in the uh, BBC arts uh, production wing of, I guess, uh, yeah, documentary or radio shows about uh, the arts. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess in his spare time or her spare time, you never know, writes films about bugs under the name John Hulk. Uh, this <laughs> slime, uh, which is about jellyfish, actually, I think. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Slither, about some kind of worms, but they're worms, worms that are like lizards or something. Uh, well, I, I think that might just be the illustrators. No, no, no. Like. It's, it's actually, they're called something. They're called something worms. I can't remember. Oh, okay. They are like, they're basically like lizards without limbs. Okay. And Bloodworm is another one of his, which has a cool cover of like a giant worm wrapped around like Big Ben or something. I'll probably mm. be reading that at some point. Mm. Yes, yes. Halkin seems to have, have um, carved out a little niche of the invertebrate horror. Yes. <laughs> um, and which we also. 1985, and it's from Hamlin, right, who, who put out a lot of horror trash fiction around mm. this. Time. Great, great front covers, not sadly. Um, as good inside as we might hope, but no. <laughs> the, but all the all the, all the covers, covers are boring. I, I, that's too bad. I unfortunately I didn't get to see the covers. I I, I read both on Kindle, so I didn't get okay. to see any yeah, covers. If you, at all. if you look them up online, I, I mine was on Kindle too. But if you look them up, you can find great cover oh. art for for yeah. all of Halkin's books. Um, but yeah, so I mean, as as um, Ron 
well knows I have an affinity for bugs. Um, <laughs> it's come up, it's come up more than once now. And in fact, um, invertebrates, uh, we just want, you know, we just talked about a movie called Slugs, which is written by an author who's kind of related in a way, same, same time period. Sean Hudson wrote a couple of books about slugs. Um, but this is not as scummy. This, this book is not as scummy. And maybe, maybe it suffers for not being as, as scummy mm. as, as yeah, slugs. It's, you know. I, I, I feel as if it falls between that, those two stools of like, th they've almost tried to write the good book rather mm -hmm. than the trashy book. But mm -hmm. it's not a very good book. It's really oh, not. <laughs> no, and it's too long. I'll, I'll get ahead of that right now. It, it uh, should yeah. be about half as long as it is. Oh. Yeah, or 180 pages. Yeah. Not 240 or whatever it is. It's, no. You should be able to read this in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Not two or three, right? Yeah, it, it would. Well, I mean, I would go, it could go either, one of either way. I mean, it would either be better as a short story or a novella mm -hmm. or uh, a longer story where, because a lot of stuff they, like it was really like just skipped over and then he, you could tell almost the the last third of it it was almost him saying like okay that's just, just I, it was it was almost like he was just trying to get to the end he just wanted to finish it because it was like he there was huge stuff that he just skipped over and it was like big time jumps and it was like oh yeah and then this happened this happened this happened and it was like well, wait a second that those would have been like interesting things right so it, I mean it would it could have been an interesting longer book had he like actually spent the time to. You know, but right. <laughs> I, I would have lost interest, I'm sure. But but yeah. at the same time, it would have. You know, it, it just felt very rushed at the end. I was like, he's like, ah, oh, whatever. I'm just whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was almost. It had that, like a, a proofreader or something had said, "Oh, you've gone too many pages and nothing interesting has happened." Right. So put something interesting in here. And yeah, then, yeah. Oh, okay then, kind of thing. So what's this book about, Ron? Oh, me? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's about uh, killer caterpillars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, when you, when, and moths, and moths. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They actually work together in, in mm -hmm. uh, they're like, uh, yeah, so they're, they're, I guess, they're, it's implied they're sentient, I guess, of some kind, that they're, uh, Things they're, like um, um, they're uh, organized in yeah. terms of their, uh, their uh, <laughs> attacks on humanity, right? And so, uh, yeah. yeah, begins with, um, um, uh, a young boy uh, in uh, who's break, broken into some kind of lab, and mm -hmm. he's, he's planning to steal one of the caterpillars out of this lab to kind of prove that he's a tough guy to his friends. Um, and then uh, <laughs> it's quite daft when you put it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, why would that? <laughs> so, first of all, it's I mean, you know, it's going to be a great book when you know, like he thinks stealing a caterpillar is going to make him a tough guy, right? The whole but, world will <laughs> admire this. And uh, sure enough, of course, he uh, falls and lets them all loose. So some of them escape. And he takes one with him in a cassette case in his pants. Yeah. And then he, is, he leave, leaves and then realizes it's, it's escaped and is, is biting him. A couple of the other ones have attached onto him and they're biting him. And he's like, ah, and then he kind of rolls away. And then that's sort of like the prologue, right? That's mm -hmm. the, uh, that's the introduction right. that, the, that the caterpillars are begin to bite him and then he's figure that he's gone. Right. And then he... I quite like the, I have to admit, this was something that I, uh, interesting, uh, people of a different generation. I quite like the cassette case. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. because it was one of the things I, I never would have thought about it before. And, but it brought me right back to my childhood. And I was like, hmm. oh yeah, I used to carry random things around <laughs> in cassette cases. <laughs> so like, it was like the thing that you had nearby, right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. oh this will do. Yeah, yeah. Nice and actually, touch. cassette case would be good because you can kind of scoop it up and then just close yeah. it, right? You know, just kind of, yeah. yeah. So it was a nice little throwback for me. It was like, oh, yeah, back when I was a yeah. kid, I used to carry random shit in cassette cases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and so, and then uh, basically it goes through, um, uh, you know, increasingly uh, the caterpillars. Uh, it, it, it sort of follows the main character of Ginny, mm -hmm. who uh, has quit her job a cushy job in the in the and the TV industry uh, in right. London, I guess, uh, and then she's sort of like uh, taken a good job that everyone wants, and she said uh, she's kind of chucked it, and she's moved out to the country uh, and to be kind of near her kind of half sister, uh, who she's very close with, right. and her and her family, and uh, um, anyway, so a, a thread that connects all the Hulkin books is yes. 
apparently the main character is someone who works high up in the TV business and oh. quits to go to the country and some bugs attack, which is, yeah, uh, again, adding to Ramsey Campbell's um, uh, suspicions. Or or whatever, is, that, yeah. is that something that Ramsey Campbell did? No, 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 no just that's that what Ramsey he Campbell. Said that he was saying that John Halkin was the, the person hiding behind the pseudonym was someone higher up in the BBC who wrote it. Right. So hence yeah. they always, so yeah, so what they, they write what they know. So their main right. character always yeah. works in the TV industry. Right, yeah. right. A spike um, actor goes out to the country and is attacked <laughs> by Cicada. That's the book I'm writing. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so, so she sort of uh, comes across the moths and uh, and little by little they get they increase and uh, they start attacking a little bit here a little bit there and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it becomes like a global pandemic basically where these yeah, uh, yeah where uh, the, the the moths and the um, and the caterpillars work together and the moths mm -hmm. come in and they squirt stuff at people's eyes and blind them and then the caterpillars yeah. uh, get on there and they basically pour into their skin and yeah. sever arteries and make them bleed out and whatever and so it's uh, and so it kind of goes on from there and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you know you know doesn't really say but say like, i get the impression that like millions of people die or something like that right and then right uh, and so then they finally figure out that these big lizards will eat the caterpillars so they bring in the cat the lizards and people start keeping them as pets and i assume that's sort of like the post-apocalyptic uh landscape is everyone with these lizard pets and that he caterpillars. monitor lizards <laughs> monitor lizards and uh, yeah, and so yeah, that's that's basically it. <laughs> yep. The that's second it. half of the book is very much better than the first as well. I think like it takes such a long time to mm. get go, and it's almost I noticed on the Kindle it's actually almost exactly at the fifty percent mark because I was reading and I was like, ah, oh, oh, no. <laughs> I'm just going to predict the finish. Because it's like you said to your point, Nick, it's just that hundred pages too long for too what long. it is. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, oh, great! They they're attacking the village fit on mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's about, it's about, yeah, the, yeah. The spring, the spring fet sort of was the big kind of like yes. centerpiece, I guess. When right. so they have the big spring festival and like the whole village is there, and then they just start dropping out of trees like like <laughs> yeah. enemy, like uh, the army or like like uh, gorillas mm -hmm. and whatever, and then uh, trooper, uh, troopers, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's happened to me though. I've actually been at a not not at a uh, like a fate or a, a thing, but I was in a park with Jen um, in the city of Stratford, which mm. is um, in Ontario, and it's famous for having, um, unsurprisingly, it, it's where all the Shakespeare plays are done. And there is actually a river that goes through it called the Avon. And I was sitting in a park, and we were actually going to go see um, uh, a Shakespeare play starring the guy who played um, the lead frost giant in the first Thor movie. Um, I can't remember his name, but he is like he's an actual he's a Shakespearean actor. I guess he was would have known Kenneth Branagh. Anyway, oh, out of the tree, like multiple multiple caterpillars are dropping out of the tree on their like little strings of silk onto me. And like much as I like bugs, I was not overly <laughs> enthused about that. Um, I jumped up and was like, they "Holy crap!" Weapons. Mm -hmm. No, no, oh, no. Right, okay. They didn't start. They didn't start biting my neck. Right, or anything like that. You got away lucky. <laughs> Did, but, a, um, did a squadron of moths come in and spit, <laughs> right, right, right. And spit acid in my eyes? No, no, sadly that didn't happen. Which is why you're but, here today and you're able yes. to do this video because... Exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, well, you know, I do. I had my pet monitor lizard with me, obviously. <laughs> you don't walk anywhere <laughs> in Canada without, don't your go monitor. Go without your monitor lizard. I was yeah. quite taken by latter halves of the book, which were like laughable, but also kind of captivating, where the caterpillars seem to like attack um, airports on mass. So yes. Ah, yes. Can't land properly. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, um, well, the caterpillars started like there's several uh, places where they sort of like cover the road to mm -hmm. like create car crashes or like airplane crashes because it makes it slippery and stuff, right? So yeah. they're all like, yes. and, and then the moths, the moths all fly into the into airplane the jet yeah. and the engines and stuff, right? Yeah. So they're all like suicide bombers that like cause. Yeah. So. They seem to be somehow aware as well that like they're going to try to bring in a biological control through like it's just like the amount yeah, of yeah. knowledge that these caterpillars <laughs> and what yeah. seem to yeah. have of human it's just yeah. I mean but what's what's so risible and so enjoyable is just like there's these lines in the book that when you read them 
even in context, but out of context, and you're just like, you know, there were more caterpillars out there. She could feel it in her bones, probably thousands of them. Right. <laughs> I say that's true all the time. <laughs> Yeah, of anywhere yeah. in the world. Yeah, anywhere in the world. <laughs> Probably thousands, yeah, thousands. Even maybe even tens of thousands. <laughs> um, I just I every now and again I would just read a line like and I just I would just start to laugh because it's so mad. Yeah. Like it's so I've ridiculous. Never at any point did it feel like like e even the fate scene, which is like the highlight. I was just like fucking move out from under the tree. <laughs> That's it. You're fine. I mean, where else <laughs> are they possibly going to come from? Well, like, yeah, that's the other thing is that it's like even like they, they it started to get so unrealistic that like like these were like super fast caterpillars too. Like how did they? I mean, they're like caterpillars are yes. pretty slow. You can I mean, even if you're not allowed to grab them, like they're still like still ancient on their way along, right? You know, and so it's like, but it's like suddenly they're like everywhere and they're all, you know, it's like, how did they get there? I mean, were you just like lying, waiting for them to get into the like, yeah, they're, yeah. they're not making a film out of this one, are they? Because you'd have to have like a, a scene of running, running, looking behind, looking behind, yeah. and then the <laughs> just Yeah, it's <laughs> it's like it's like the the Austin Power scene with like the with like the um uh what do you call it the um uh what's the the big the big thing with the big the big wheel uh uh what, what's what's that big the big machine the, the big machine where the guy with the big wheel that makes things flat oh yeah, yeah, yeah steamroll yeah. steamroll steam steam yes steam yeah. Roll, yeah so there, there's the steamroll he's like ah he's like ah and the steamroll is coming he's like <laughs> yes, ah yeah, yeah. and you see like yes. they're like super far apart but it's like going really really slow yeah yes yeah exactly yeah um, um but again i just you know you read this stuff like I reckon there's already enough in existence to wipe out the population of Linkford if they set their minds to it. They certainly never even try to explain why they've become sentient or that. It's just like, there's just this well, generic catch-all of, do, there was some genetic yes. genetic testing in a, yes. in a lab and the, the scientist has gone missing and refuses right. to comment. Like, the end. Another thing that's great <laughs> is like, I mean, this is, this is like, you know, again, me being, um, boringly pedantic about, you know, <laughs> about insects. But caterpillars, like their eyes, like the big eyes they have at the front of their face are fake. They're not real. Mm. Their eyes are three little dots on the top of their head and they can only see dark and light. They have mm. no actual field of vision whatsoever. Oh, but these are it's, genetically modified that's caterpillars. True, that's true, that's true. Exactly where the moths would squirt their um, yeah. venom, I think. Is that, is, that, is that the title of your new YouTube video, by the way? Boringly pedantic about insects. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> but it is worth mentioning, we're having a bit of fun with it, but but unfortunately the book is, yeah, I 20, maybe even 10% fun, 90% quite boring, really, is it? Well, the, the biggest thing that I couldn't understand was they made all of the human characters so unlikable. They had this whole subplot where the yes. main girl, Ginny, is having this like huge torrid love affair with her sister's husband, who has three yeah. kids. It's kind of just depressing. Who, 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 who's, well, first of all, it's depressing. And he, they never made any attempt to give this guy a personality at all. He's basically, <laughs> a, a you know, he's a doctor and he uh, says darling a lot. He likes tea. Basically, that, that's basically all you know about him, right? So it's like, well, this, and so she's so in love with him that she'll be able to, like, you know, betray her sister who she really loves for this random guy. And also, like, rejecting the advances of various other eligible, of other like, men. fairly yeah. nice guys. Like, yeah, yeah. Like the actor guy, and then there's the, pi the pilot guy. The pi who well, who he ends up with, which is the other thing, is that once once the the, the brother-in-law who uh, has this sort of big death scene at the airport near the end, and she's like, oh, it was too late, Bernard was dead. And you're supposed Eaten to like- my caterpillars. Well, we like, well, who, 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 are we supposed to care that Bernard's dead? Like, you're supposed to have this weight to it. And then like the next page, she's with the other guy, right? Like, she's like, no, no, and never makes it up with the, with the, with the half-sister. And I was like, wait, no. She's like a terrible person. <laughs> like, yep. why? Yep. Why am I supposed to care thought, that she lives? You know, like it was. It was a really big. I mean, regardless of of like the actual like plot of the book, like the characterization was really poor. But I did like, like the horny old vicar. <laughs> the horny <laughs> old yeah, vicar yeah, yeah. character, I quite yeah. liked. He kept, he kept, uh, what I liked about him was he was like, ha! He'd have that moment of 
she'd laugh in my face. I'm an old prune faced git. But if I but maybe, slowly... <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> yeah, he might have been the best character in the book. Yeah, I could relate. Um. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but it was like and at, at the end, even if you were supposed to be like, yay, they won and they won against the Ketters, but I was like, well, I don't care that these people won. I wanted her to like get 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 hers, you know what I mean? So it, it was it just struck me as well in a very yeah. tomato tomato way. It's interesting how totally different you expect a person's character to be, depending on if they're referred to as Bernard or Bernard. <laughs> Like oh, Bernard. those are two very different people, aren't they? Bernard and Bernard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sure. No, 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 no. It's fine because that is the way you pronounce yeah. it, and, and that is the way we pronounce it. But it's interesting. Oh. You expect two totally different guys, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I would never Bernard like twat. and like Bernard. Bernard who cares? Bernard. Like oh, you get Bernard. Like oh, Bernard. But Bernard. <laughs> oh yeah, Bernie's down the pub. Bernard. He's a good old egg. Not to mention that Bernard, like the only other thing I know about Bernard is right after the big spring effect, when all these like like dozens of people, have, like 50 people have died, including children and stuff, they go back to the cottage. The first thing he does is, smoke a tea, love, right? Like, like yeah. no, this, this guy, you're right. I, I think you're right, Ron. You didn't miss me. He's a Bernard. <laughs> he's a Bernard. He's not a Bernard. He's a Bernard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was... Apologies to any Bernards this thing, but uh, well, you asked for it. Oh, geez. I yeah. just like every time, like, I, I mark these various things, but you know, <laughs> this indicates the distribution of the insects as evidenced in actual attacks and reported sightings. Red crosses are deaths from caterpillar attacks. Like, I just can't read that shit out loud without just like <laughs> <laughs> deaths from caterpillar attacks. Who's, yep. who's doing uh, the just, audio like, book? For it's so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they, yeah, they have to edit out every time they just burst out laughing after reading this. Right, well, well, you kind of know where you're going to get with it. Down every five minutes. This is fucking ridiculous. I refuse to read anymore. <laughs> well, you, you kind of know what you're going to get when the book is called Squelch. I mean, like, you know, it's, uh, it's true, true. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. I mean, they, they obviously well, weren't taking themselves too seriously, I guess, right? So, well, you say that though, but. Seems but, weirdly serious. Oh, well, yeah, that's the thing. It, it's yeah. yeah. Considering the title, I thought it was me a little more tongue in cheek or like wink to the audience, but it was really yeah. I don't know. I, I have to say I'm slightly um, I was keen at first to read Slither and Slime, mm -hmm. but if they're too much maybe like not. this, um, yeah. maybe a speed. Re I mean, if there's a similar, you know, worms attack the village fit, uh, mm -hmm. jellyfish attack the. Beach fit, I guess. So, you know, have a the feeling they're all surfing always... regatta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so, uh, yes. So, yeah. Um, I was just saying that uh, on the strength of this, I'm not sure mm -hmm. if I'm going to get any more John Halkin. I don't know about you fellas. I'll probably get a pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because of my specific interest in all things. Uh, buggy yeah. and stupid um i might give the worms one to go. <laughs> well let us know if you're any good and if yeah, if, yeah. If, if it's if it's anything better than we can uh, is that for blood sure. worm uh nick uh that well e either one that one right. or i was or... thinking the same thing blood worm doesn't seem to be available as a cheap kindle I, I think if they were all available i would go i would try blood worm mm -hmm. but seeing as they're not yes uh, i guess slither although jellyfish Sound. <laughs> see, see, we're see, doomed, Clive. We're, we're already doomed. talking ourselves into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, well. So shall right. we? Shall we? We move on to the the second part of our our double bill here on our yes. spooky Halloween Ooh, episode. If you dare. Oh, but before we move on, there's the one story I got to tell. So. Oh yes, uh, please. Yeah, yeah. a little bit of a personal uh, experience. So, mm. so I literally just finished Squelch. I just put it down. 30 minutes passed and uh, I was, uh, you know, putting around doing whatever. And my, my kids scream and like, daddy, daddy, there's, there's a caterpillar on the sofa. And I was like, no, there isn't. <laughs> That's impossible. So I go over and sure enough, 30 minutes after I finished squelch, I find a <laughs> caterpillar on my sofa. First time ever. Right. Like how, like, um, Where did it get in your house? I, I, I'll let, we're, we, we're trying to figure out that it possibly it came in on my daughter's backpack. 
Oh, it just sort of like sure. uh, you picked up uh, kind of on the way home and brought it in. On, and I was like, how did it get in my house? That's what they want you to do. Yeah, that's what they, yeah. Luckily, this was a brown one, not a green one with a yellow stripe. But uh, but still, it was uh, it was oh. look, you you couldn't make up that coincidence, right? It was if really it was striped, if it was striped one, you wouldn't be here speaking to us. Oh today. yeah, I'd be yeah. The yeah. moss would have gotten me so. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. There you go. An extra frisson of fear for little, our little the, It's real. The caterpillars are can come trying to get me. They're coming to get ah! you. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Feel the pinch of their vicious mandibles. <laughs> right. I, I, okay. will, I will, everyone watching is now quaking in their boots. So it's time to move on to... Um, to the boil that ate London. <laughs> the festering. From, from, from evil caterpillars to evil water. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. On uh, uh, Arrow, put this one out. And this was... Uh, so... I, I'm not going to ask you because I know Nick, but you can add something if you like um, mm -hmm. when I'm done with this. But were you familiar, Ron, with the writer of this book, Guy N. Smith? No. Right. OK, so uh, Guy N. Smith, 1939 to 2020, uh, an English guy from Staffordshire, wrote, I think, upward of 70 horror novels uh, and short stories. Um, Novelizations of Disney films, okay, including Sleeping Beauty and Song of the South as well. Uh, a little bit of soft core pornography, uh, a bunch of non-fiction about like game hunting and um, and you know wildlife and country life and stuff like that. But most of us, is like if you so basically both um, me and Nick grew up in the 80s or a portion of the 80s in the UK and pretty much Guy N. Smith would be in every news agent W. Smith. Guy N. Smith was uh, ubiquitous, right? If that's mm -hmm. the right word. Guy N. Smith was, was everywhere mm -hmm. and so even if you didn't read his books you would have known the name. You would have seen, seen the covers. covers. Yeah. yeah. A bit but like, I mean, Stephen King would have been the same. You know, mm. in that way, in North America, you would have seen Stephen King books everywhere. Right. Um, yes. Guy yeah. Smith was the was our shoddy little <laughs> yes. local version. Um, mm -hmm. He's like the the British Stephen King, basically. Yeah. Kind of, except he never went the doorstop bestseller. No, no, they were always uh, uh, thin. Yeah. They were easier, always easier, yeah, easier like reads, they, yeah, mm -hmm. like this one, 180 pages, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. as they should be. Um, so, and most famous um, for writing a book which eventually became a series of books, Clickety Clack, Clickety Clack, Night of the Crabs. Mm. Uh, which, and not the kind you pick up from sleeping with uh, uh, a lady of disrepute, but the, the actual <laughs> arthropods. No, um, although you might get boils. <laughs> yes, we'll get into very soon. Just to um, give a flavour, I just realised I have this. Divorced of the book is just a cover, but there we go. Oh, Meat of the Crabs. Night of the Crabs. Mm. What a cover. <laughs> That's beautiful, yes. isn't it? Gigantic. Are, are, are they gigantic of... crabs, or is oh, it yeah, just a close-up of a crab? Yeah. Oh, no, okay. no, they're, they're huge. Okay. Yeah. Watch out. They're Godzilla st st sized crabs. Are, are, so they only, really... are they only at night? Are they nocturnal? Ah, good question. I can't remember. No, I think they're out in the No, later on, and yeah. later on. So why is it called Night of the Crabs? <laughs> well, they first come out at night. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And it's part of the new New English Library. Uh, okay. And this is the actual book cover of, of I don't have the book anymore. Oh. This is the book <laughs> that I used to have. Oh. And I first read when I was a kid and uh, loved it. And then years later, I uh, kind of got reintroduced to the crabs, and there's like five, six sequels, something like that. Uh, least, almost, yeah. almost everyone a winner, uh, apart from the few last couple towards the end of his life. But um, the crab series is trash heaven. Uh, and I know Nick agrees with me on this because I lent him more, mm -hmm. all I've the read, crabs I've, books. I've read 
quite a few of them, yes. Except Although, the first one. You haven't read the first one. I don't think I've read the first one. And I haven't read the one that's like Crab's final sacrifice. It looks like it, they've joined a cult, the crabs. They're like they're sacrificing a girl with a big sword. Yeah. <laughs> that one looks yes. interesting. Just to reiterate, uh, uh, viewers, that is a woman on an altar with a giant crab standing over her holding a sword or a dagger. So yeah. I'm curious, has, did uh, Guy and Smith ever followed the Stephen King route of having his books made into movies? Has there ever been a Guy and movie, Guy and Smith movie? Oh, not really. Well, he had a, he had there was a ripoff, right? So so yeah, there was plays. one. Yeah, there was a film called Island Claws, which was yeah. a giant crab film, which I think started life as supposedly a Guy and Smith adaptation, but uh, the end result is. Is nowhere near as it's quite boring as I remember. Right? It's not a great movie, yeah. Clive made me watch it, unsurprisingly, <laughs> at his house. Oh, yeah, he, he does that to me too. That was one of our movie nights, wasn't it? It was, yes. Yeah. Not a not not recommended. Island claws. <laughs> a lot of um, a lot of like a lot of forced perspective, like giant claws coming in like like this, you know. <laughs> but it is, a good, it is a good question because yes, you would have thought um at, you know, at some point someone would have got to trying to knock out a, a low but because uh, crabs okay maybe not because but he did like werewolf books and, and mm -hmm. lots of things about yeah pits or festerings or sucking pit or slime beast because i mean i i thought reading this book that it was uh sort of lent itself to a like at least a fairly low budget uh you know decent horror yeah. movie i thought it would have mm -hmm. made a pretty pretty good movie but uh um, yeah, no, it was quite, quite cinematic in its scope, at least. Anyway, but or yeah, he, yeah. he writes like that. Street, street trash might be <laughs> the closest thing, and I'm now thinking about it. It's just so a guy pure, pure gloopiness yeah. of this, this specific book. Ah, oh, okay. so, in this book, right? So, so Guy and Smith, uh, uh, big fan of the Crabs books, and I've read I don't know half a dozen of the Guy and books, maybe not that many. Mm. And very hit and miss. Mm. So you have the Crabs books, good fun. Uh, some other one I read, was it called Throwback or something like that? Like a Neanderthal. That wasn't very good. Snakes was reasonably good fun. Alligators wasn't very good. You know, it's total hit and miss. But they're always, and you can get most of them in, in, in these reasonably priced Kindles as well. There's a mm. company called Black Hill Books who put this festering out. They put mm. at least 50 of his books out. Mm. Um, Oh so, yeah, that, that's at the very beginning of the book. It's it has like a list of all the. Right, this is number right. fifty one that was Kindleized, I guess. Yeah. Right. So I, they might all be Kindleized mm. now. By now, yeah. Yeah, but um, so it's fun. It's something I like to do on a Saturday night: is go out on my balcony with a bottle of wine, um, some cheese. Check there's no caterpillars because that would be <laughs> disastrous. And then yeah, download a, a Guy and Smith, and you know sometimes make it way oh. all the way through to the end, like I did with this. And then sometimes give up after a few bit. Ah, fuck you, guy. And you know. Um, oh, so so the the cheese was actual cheese, not that wasn't like a euphemism for the book itself, right? No. Oh no 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 no. Cheese, of course. Cheese and some cheese, right? So. Cheese and yeah. yeah. So um, so this particular one uh, again we chose at random, so I didn't know if we were going to get a good guy and Smith or a boring guy and Smith, but uh, luckily I think we kind of came uh, came up with a bit of a gem. This one, I think, I I kind of enjoyed the festering. Mm. Um, before we get on to what the story is, did, I mean, where where did you both come down on this? Is was this a fun read or or not so much? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I it was it was gross. <laughs> it was properly gross. Um, I have to say, yeah, I, was... I, I I I more than once was like, Ugh, good <laughs> god, <laughs> and and maybe much much like Ron had a story to share about um, <laughs> caterpillars. I might have already told you this, Clyde, but I came down while in Japan shortly after the earthquake with a terrific case of boils, which I'd never experienced in my life. Mm -hmm. But after reading this book, I am sure that Guy and Smith must have had a case of boils because this book just seems too... Spot on, on the nose. It's, yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> on the nose, you know. And you so I actually found, I found parts of it hard to read because I was remembering... The, the earthquake released a festering plague from below Tokyo and that's what got I you. I suspect that that's exactly what happened Clive. Now so you, now like you mention it. Plague pit or something near your house? There's no question. 
Um, How do you get boils? Like, what are, what are what is the cause of well, boils? It, it is a bacteria, apparently. Oh, okay. Uh, and so I think if you get run down enough, uh, as I was after the earthquake, and then somehow this bacteria, you're introduced to it. Um, but yeah, like at one point, because uh, then they also recurred. Like they they came back like once or twice, like over the the months afterwards. And we were actually on holiday somewhere, and one of them swelled up on my armpit to the size of like a small grapefruit. And then in the night, just burst. And it was like a Ziploc bag full of pus. Like it was just, I woke up and my whole, my whole side was just soaked. It was, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, so reading this book was like, I was like, oh, just to put Jesus, this I remember this. Just so people who don't know, Nick is filthy. He never washes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, I'm, I'm from the these things I'm side in Ireland. I you know, we rubbed ourselves with cow patties in order to, you know, to clean <laughs> that'll, ourselves. That'll do it. <laughs> Click and span. Um, yes, so so this uh, is about a, a young couple. They've just bought a house in the country and their drinking water is, is undrinkable. So they have to have a well built. They hire- Well, well first is actually is that they're, they run out of water. The water- uh, there's not there's there's a drought so right. they, there is no light water right so they have right. to have the well yeah yeah so they, 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 um, yes okay so be well and they're kind of right. middle classy city people as well which I think is important mm. and I do think yes. that Guy N and it, this comes up this comes up increasingly in the later Crabs books Guy N is quite right wing doesn't have a lot yeah. of time for lefty city people with their highfalutin ways and their you know their new right. aged ideas. And so he quite likes to drop these people in the shit. Uh, yeah. That's a thing he enjoys. And so this this book is absolutely just prime Guy and Smith, like, oh, here are these, this artist and his kind of slutty wife who have moved to the countryside and and let's just <laughs> let, let, let them fester. Um, sunk their well um, into, as we know from a prologue. Is oh, yes, the prologue. A medieval... Uh, Plague, plague pit <laughs> yeah. yeah which I, I guess is also there's a lot there's some kind of connotation that this is all down to uh adultery and fool era, fooling around and slipping oh, yeah. around and yeah, yeah. yeah all that's pure guy in part of the mix um yeah so then basically this uh i mean it doesn't need to make sense really so then i couldn't really quite figure out is it the water is uh, it a gas is it is it an just a indescribable evil or it's yeah, not yeah, yeah. really clear really how it's it never clear yeah is it is it a, is it an entity like an evil yeah, thing or is it just is it just a plague that's just like like sort yeah. of infected the water or... they talk about as like a sentient blob that's kind of just like yeah yeah there's like a, there's like a yeah there's like a couple places where it, like it it's trans translucent yeah. or like this kind well, of then, glowing there's a great there's a sorry spoilers but there's a great passage near the end as well just when you're like okay this is gross there's a nice bit where guy and smith someone actually falls down the well and they encounter the like embodiment of whatever all this is mm -hmm. and he refers to it as being like a lump of old man's phlegm splat out on the side <laughs> door, which I thought, ah, oh, nice, nice, nicely <laughs> done there. Yeah. But anyway, there's some ancient festering evil at the bottom of this well, and it seems to drive people both crazy and horny, yeah. and yeah. They, they, they burst out in, yeah, these pus covered boils, much like our filthy friend Nick there, mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, that's kind of it. And, and there, there's some great, you know, gory set pieces and uh, it goes, really goes for it near the end, right? Where, our, you know, the, 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 the woman has decided, I will take over the world. <laughs> and, like, yeah, it, it kind of, yeah, paints itself into a bit. But I, I pretty much enjoyed this from page one to last. I mean, full throttle, gory, trashy, plenty of, you know, great characters set up just to die and explode and be ripped apart or killed or whatever. 
this this is what I want of a Saturday evening with my wine and cheese on the sofa. <laughs> this is uh, my idea of a good time. Mm. My my only uh, issue with it, I think, was uh, I mean that of course the uh, the the main cut the uh, spoilers again that the couple both die uh, mm. by the end, but you're sort of like uh, like sort of the um, the hero ends up being this sort of like random uh, uh, old doctor, or mm -hmm. is it is a doctor who is just sort yeah, of yeah. yeah, but they don't even introduce him till the third act uh, as even a character. So it just yeah. so it so that was a little bit like, well, why is this guy the guy who kind of like lives and saves the day? It's you know, yeah. it's sort of like I I wanted him to be kind of introduced a little earlier to care that he wins. You know, so if um, if this was a proper good book. I would agree with you. Right. Um, okay. I see. <laughs> and, and also, the fact that you know the the reveal, which they kind of reveal twice, mm -hmm. we already know from the like it's not. Yeah, we know it's a plague. Mm -hmm. But what the fuck? We knew that from the the <laughs> fact that they try and pull too. that is like yeah. <laughs> what mm -hmm. get on with it? Come on, more yeah. faces melting and and <laughs> the, 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 you know that's what I want. And, and people driving driving cars into other cars and much like the the people in Sl slugs the movie we covered there's like mostly people being stupid more than anything else yeah, yeah. um but did, you, think... did you enjoy it uh uh ron yeah yeah i i enjoyed it i i was i made the mistake of uh reading a section while i was eating lunch so that was <laughs> I, I don't recommend that i don't recommend no. while, while, I while not reading so. this book <laughs> I literally, I, I don't get grossed out or like, you know, like scared too easy, but I, I, I actually kind of had to put my food down for a little bit while I was, while I was eating it. Um, but um, I think, I think I, I was, I mean, yeah, sure. It's properly trashy and, and you can't fault it for doing its trashiness uh, as well as it can kind of thing. I think like just as of just like critiquing the book, I think I really didn't need the sex part of it. You know, I just thought it was, it, it, it sort of like felt really tacked on and really unnecessary that that it makes you also horny. Like, I, like, I, like it just sort of like didn't, I don't know, it just didn't feel like it was necessary. I mean, yeah, I, I get that they want like the sex and the gore together right. kind of thing, right? And which is why I thought it would make a good movie. But I don't know, I just felt it yeah. was very like kind of like, well, like wh why, why does it, why does they have to be horny as well? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just sort of. <laughs> no, no, I, I like that element because it made it more grow. Like at the end, when when she's totally just turned into mm -hmm. like this feral thing covered yeah. in boils, but she's also like spreading her legs and like trying <laughs> to get. It's like ah, ugh, it kind of makes it even worse. But I think right? it was it was like the like the kind of like the one part where I was sort of like, wait a second, what, what is happening? I was like really into it. And the only thing that made me sit back was when she suddenly was having uh, an affair with the plumber, you know, like it's sort of like it, you know, she's sort of like normal and, you know, they're all worried about the, you know, there's all this stuff about water and plumbing and pipes and, and all this stuff. And she's, you know, you know, uh, you know, taking off advantage. She's very attractive and, you know, and, and uh, you know, taking off a track, uh, you know, advances from other people and saying like, no, I only have eyes for my husband. And, and then like, suddenly she's like fucking the plumber. And I was like, but I was is, like, wait, I was like, wait a second, what's happening? Huh? But is, that? Is, that, is, is that supposed to be the festering? Is, is she already oh, infected with that? Well, yeah. I think it is, but at the, I, 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 that's sort of like, you realize it later, but at the same, it was the only mm -hmm. thing I was like, wait a second, what, what the hell? Like, why is she, it just, it felt really kind of like, but uh, to I, me, that was that was Guy and Smith saying, "Oh, these middle class, high, you know, arty people from the city. Of course, they are, you know." And and then the, the husband obviously does sleep with a, a prostitute right. when he's in the city, and then you know that. When you had your boils, Nick, did you fuck the plum? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, Mario, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and Luigi, both. It, right, it's to me. No, I'm the wiener. <laughs> They double teamed you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm the wiener. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, oh, I, I mean, yeah, I, I get that it was oh, okay. So it was supposed to be to do with the kid, but it's just sort of like that was the one part where I was kind of like, wait a second, what's happening here? Like, yeah, it's sort of like yeah, it just felt right. I thought I was I was fine to the world until it just 
that was where it felt almost like too exploitative. You know, I mean, it was, you know, <laughs> right. I don't think there's any such it. a thing, right? So, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. I think the difference probably comes in, like, now that you've read this, mm. you, you, you're primed for it for your next guy. In right, right, right. Yeah, I get it now. Yeah. So it's going to be just as trashy. Mm. Are you uh, are you at all curious to read, for example, Night of the Crabs? or another? Sure, yeah, yeah. I'd be up for that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, right. There we go. Next Halloween show, then, because yeah, I have oh, yeah. read. I haven't read Night of the Crabs in a very long time, and neither of you have either. I've never read it, no. And there's nothing more terrifying than giant crabs. <laughs> and we... But so. do, do they have the sword in, in that one? That's not. That's only in the last one. Not in the original, I don't think, no. You, you're digging your own grave here, Ron, because that means I make <laughs> you read the entire crab series. So stop quick while you're ahead. <laughs> I'm digging my own say, well. I'm digging my um, well. <laughs> there was a, there was a couple of things that, I mean, like the um, the description of the omnipresent stink was mm. really effective. Mm. Like it like it did make me right. feel like I started to feel nauseous just reading yeah, yeah. the description of this like never ending smell of rot and decay. Um, and the other thing was it reminded me a bit weirdly enough of raw head Rex. Um, ah, right, because of the stench. Because of the stench and also because of this idea of, of like, I mean, in, in Rawhead Rex, which is a story by Clive Barker, you know, they kind of un unearth this big stone that's in this farmer's field, right? Right, right. And then it's, right. it's obviously been left to kind of block in this, this ancient monster that's kind of been living down there. And then it, it runs yeah. rampant. Yeah. And for some I, reason, it just, this countryside evil buried underground I, kind of. I think that's the other thing about this book that really, for me personally, tapped into, yeah, a, a whole sub-genre of people digging up shit in the English countryside that you shouldn't mm -hmm. put those wrong. Like, yes. so many films, books, TV series, and I like that stuff anyway, but it particularly, it taps into my nostalgia and, uh, yeah, Emma James stuff as well, even all that stuff is, you know, mm -hmm. digging up that you shouldn't dig up and anything like, any dig up an ancient evil that turns people into slime monsters or I'm there, dude. That's like, <laughs> that's where I live. Right? For you. So it would be very hard for guy, you know, you know, to be in a fairly safe pair of hands. That's why I, kind of reading the plot synopsis and even though Guy and Smith was hit and miss, I thought, yeah, this is probably, there's another one he wrote called The Sucking Pit, which is just about, again, a couple who live in a shack in the woods and there's like a, like that hole you have up there in Canada, Nick, the bottomless hole which people throw things in. Um, what's that hole called? Isn't that near you? Your wife's obsessed with it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the one in Oak Island. Yeah, there we go. It's kind of yeah, like yeah. that, right? It's like uh, <laughs> just this pit that people have been throwing things in for like time immemorial and then something eventually comes out of it. And so, uh, yeah. Stop throwing shit in my house right now. <laughs> Yeah, um. the guy stinks. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, no, so I, I would say this is a pretty good, like if you've never read Guy and Smith before, and obviously Ron hadn't, and he seemed to get a kick out of it. So I'd say it's a pretty good, I mean, Crabs is, you know, is, is, is the top of the heap, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the festerings, yeah, let's put it this way then, if you've come off your Crabs high, and you're looking for um, something else by Guy and Smith, uh, a good Guy and Smith as opposed to a meh Guy and Smith. I think the festering is pretty good and uh, perfect for Halloween. Um, it might be worth mentioning too for people who who do like Guy and Smith um, or who might find Guy and Smith that he was one of the inspirations for um, Garth Marenghi. Of Garth Marenghi's ah, Dark Place, right. uh, yeah. which is a very, very good. Um, was it Channel Four? Might have been. Have Seriously? you ever seen Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, Rob? Okay, you you'd enjoy that. I right? think you'd enjoy it quite a bit. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a British comedy series, um, and basically the it's based around a a schlocky English horror writer who's pretty much a, a comp composite of Guy Ann Smith, Sean Hudson, who wrote Slugs. Possibly yeah. Halkin and a few other people, uh, James Herbert, who wrote Rats, it kind of mashed them all together into mm -hmm. this ridiculous character and who then stars in his own TV show, which is on a you, horror show. Did you ever see on Netflix or on the film uh, Mind Horn? 
with uh, Steve Coogan, no. our old friend Steve no. Coogan. Oh, there Mine we go. That's Horn. Okay. Mine Horn. That's a, did you see Mine Horn, Nick? No, I haven't seen it either. Oh, there you are. Okay. If, it's on Netflix. You watch, you watch Mine Horn and you watch Mine Horn and Daphne Ring. A very similar, uh, that kind of era we're talking about, mm -hmm. that kind of parody of, uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of fun to be had. Okay. Um, um, yes, so the one other thing I want to mention as well is I'm wondering if there is a Guy N. Smith book where a character doesn't exclaim, bloody fools, <laughs> after someone has, it seems to always, it's like, a, it's like his Hitchcock cameo <laughs> thing, or this, bloody fools, there's always a bloody fool. I, I do want to mention that both of these books were very British. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were exceptionally British. Like a lot of like this. It, I, actually, um, luck. I was lucky. I was reading it on Kindle because you can do like the like looking up words. You can like touch the oh, word okay. and look it up. Because mm -hmm. there was several like British isms that I had to sort of like, what does that even mean, right? So I, I was able to like look it up and it would come oh, up as funny. British slang. Like like the the, the the dictionary come up like British slang for blah 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 blah. Right. Do like, you remember hmm. any? Uh, I was gonna write them down, but I was it was too late. One that I can remember off the top of my head was the uh, recce, or I don't even know how to pronounce it, where it was oh, reconnaissance. Recce. Yeah, uh, recce, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Recce, is it recce? How you yeah. pronounce it? Recce? You would have heard R E C C E. I, I know, yeah, I would have I yeah, and it is reconnaissance, yeah. yeah but I, yeah. I remember it showing up in like old episodes of Doctor Who, because uh, mm. the brigadier who's a character would always say, Go do a recce. Oh yeah, yeah, like um, that. So yeah, yeah. Th and that was one example. But there were there were several. I there were probably five or six at least where I was like, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> and there's a a lot of talk of tea. Everyone like especially in well, in, yes. in in Squelch. It was everyone was talking about, hey, it's time for tea. Okay, tea tea time. Okay, let's have some tea. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. To, is that something that because uh, I I suppose it can go either way. Can I? I know you are. I, are you? I, since you're a little bit of an anglophile, you kind of get a bit of a kick out of it. I, it was fun. I just it was yeah. it was like a little like uh, I I forget how important tea is to the Brits. So it's it's very like oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's sort of like, oh, yeah, that's a thing, right? <laughs> yeah, it's four, four o'clock. Is that it? Four o'clock tea? Is that tea time? Is that right? I have I have a machine over there that I that I had. Basically, it's a Japanese machine that keeps the water at, you know, it's those, those big things and it keeps at a perfect tea temperature and I, at any moment I can right. go over there and have a cup you know tea. if, if cup say of. for example I've had a stressful day where I've been attacked by moths right or um Get as we go for Ron, it can happen or, well. or you have boils or yeah. have I yeah, broken out in festering boils uh caused okay. by a plague um yeah I can just go have a cup of tea hmm. um or a I cup think of the last I, the last thing I want to say is that actually, so where my cousins grew up in Dublin is a place called Tala. And it doesn't have the best reputation. It's not necessarily the nicest bit of Dublin, although the part they grew up in was okay. But um, I discovered quite recently that Tala is the Gaelic word for plague pit. Ah. And apparently it may well have been at some point where, so who knows? And I played there as a child. So that maybe that's where they the the boils came from. Maybe uh -huh. it was nothing to do with Japan. Yeah, maybe it delayed was reaction. Delayed, yeah, because of your being in tower. dormant personal hygiene standards. Well, yes, 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 yes. I, I mean, never met a sponge I wanted to touch. <laughs> in fact, I've been in the room with Nick when SpongeBob comes on. He turns it off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, got, it's got both sponge and water. So. Yeah. Fuck that sponge. Yeah, no yeah, thanks. That, that's funny. That's exactly what he said. That's exactly <laughs> what he said. Right. So I think my job uh, painting an unfair picture of Nick as a man who has washed has been done. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like, uh, and, uh, thank well you done. for that, Clive. Well done. I think, I think that that was suitably terrifying enough. You can't handle anymore. So until... Next time. Ah!